here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you a film breakdown of Patrick Tony and his defensive scheme. In this video, I'll explore what to expect from Patrick Tony, what he's done in the past, what he's likely to do here at Florida, and specifically what happened in the Sun Belt Championship game where Louisiana took on App State. As always, if you like the content on this channel, subscribe to it, follow us on social media. Drop us a dono on Patreon, where you can support our efforts to bring you this type of content all year long. And check out the podcast each and every Monday, where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. Without further ado, let's see what Patrick Tony brings to the table. I'll be using the Louisiana game versus App State in the Sun Belt Championship, just like I did on offense, to examine Patrick Tony's defensive play calling, his scheme, what he does well and what he doesn't do well. Right off the top... If you don't know this, you're going to be seeing this frequently throughout Florida's first season with Napier and staff. Tony wants to be a tactical defense. This is definitely a welcome change from the previous regime. Essentially, the goal is to run whatever form of coverage, whatever defensive line scheme, whatever linebacker personnel and scheme you need to use to exploit your opponent's weakness. He does a lot of database research. Opponent research, success versus different looks, as well as essentially using game theory, something that I really like. Uh, If your opponent knows what you're doing, you know what they're doing, what do you do? So it's very, very tactical. There is not going to be one thing you see on this video that Patrick Tony prefers to do. What he prefers to do is whatever messes up the offense, and he will try different things to accomplish that. So right off the bat, first play of the game here for Louisiana on defense. We'll dive into the film and see what is happening. Let's rewind. Here's our start. Opening up here, too high safety look, which Tony's going to like to start in, but then he will move from it. This is nice because it gives the quarterback the same opening look on most plays. App State's going to motion here. And then you're going to see a perfect, in my opinion, a perfect reaction from Louisiana right away. We're going to take our nickel back. We're going to split him. If you've watched my previous defensive videos, especially covering teams like Alabama, uh, you've seen this kind of alignment. Florida often messed this up. Already done well here. Splitting the distance here and here. Able to play both the run and the pass. Safety then comes down. And now we're looking like we're going to wind up playing cover one man. So we're going to lock up here and here. And we're going to play very aggressive versus what we expect to be a run on the first play of the game. Again, this is playing App State's tendencies. We are not going to play safe. We're not just going to wind up sitting here in a cover too high, leaving him wide open. Uh, We are going to play to their tendency. And what we get is, in fact, the tendency. We're going to get an outside run. We're going to force this to the sideline, miss a tackle, and he's going to wind up picking several yards. But a couple of things to note here off the bat that are done well. One... And we're not going to cover this too much in this video, but App State likes to run a lot of zone just like Napier's team does. They're trying to run wide zone here, trying to get outside, give the running back a chance to take any one of these lanes that he likes. And we want to counter that by making sure here that we fill these gaps. Now we get a nice piece of edge control here initially. Get driven back, throw our man off. And now we're in to make this play. This is really textbook defense here on the defensive edge, and then we just missed this tackle. But that's what you want to see from your defensive ends, is you want to wind up seeing them hold the edge. You'll see in this video, App, uh, App State, rather, sorry, Louisiana does a nice job, rather consistently, of setting the edge on either side to make sure, and you can see it here and here, to make sure their linebackers are able to scrape across the formation and make tackles, free to make plays accordingly. Florida struggled to set the edge a lot Uh, throughout the previous regime and we hope to see that improve and so far Tony's defense does a nice job as far as the secondary goes nothing going on here we manned up just like we expected with one free safety first play of the game opens with about a five yard gain it's now third and 13 for App State Louisiana again going to play to tendencies here we're going to come out too high shell conflict defender is going to split the difference just like we should App State not playing an aggressive passing formation, in fact, which is two receivers here, H back and a running back. And so Louisiana is going to counter that by making sure they're adjusted here in the box for the run. Their numbers are good. You always want to see that first. And then we're going to let this play develop. It should be noted that under Tony's leadership last year in the Sun Belt, uh, Louisiana allowed the lowest completion rate for quarterbacks. It also allowed the lowest QB rating 
in the Sun Belt Conference. It led the conference in sacks, was second in pressures, and led the conference in passes defended with the second lowest DPI. So this defense is going to work because it's largely going to put their players in a position to succeed. Now let's watch how this plays out. We're going to get a play fake here out of the pistol. Here comes our play fake. There's our conflict defender. He is going to play the edge. If this gets handed off, of course, he'll come in and make a tackle. If this is not handed off, he's going to lock up here, which is what's going to happen. Our free corner, his responsibility is this H-back. If he stays in, he knows he can go. If there's no action to his side, he can go, which is going to happen. Our linebacker here, I'm going to dive in. See, this is now a play fake. He's going to recover in his zone. He's going to recover in his zone. And now we're playing a zone defense. Very, very sound. A zone defense where we have one, two, three, four, five, and six on three. Winning the numbers game here, playing to the tendency. We got a lot of pressure already in the pocket. We're under duress. And this is a really, really nice job of coverage here. He's going to peek in. He's peeking in. He's making sure he reads this. He sees these routes going vertical. They have not broken early on. No moves have been made early on. He knows these are deep routes. He's going to recover here to help. We're going to funnel to my help. Take a look at the footwork here. We're going to open up, open up, and we're going to funnel to the help. Make this a two-on-one. And then here on the outside, he's outside the numbers or roughly on the numbers. We're going to take an inside look here. Make this a really long throw over the top to the outside. Use the sideline as our help and force this ball back inside. If he wants to run this deep, this deep comeback, we're in a good position there to make that play. All in all, we're going to get a sack right back here with all the action on the backside. One thing you'll notice on film throughout this is that Tony's an excellent, in my opinion, secondary coach. The weaknesses I think you'll see in this game occur up front uh, at some points in the linebacking core, when it, especially when it comes to pass rush and gap discipline. But the secondary uh, is fantastic. Rotations are good. Technique is really good. They're very well coached, very sound. You're going to see that throughout film, and you see it here. And again, this is rather aggressive posturing by Louisiana. Uh, they're choosing only to play, initially, if you want to look at it this way, they're only going to play a three-on-two on a third and 13. But they're playing tendencies, they like their matchups, they squeeze the routes perfectly, and they wind up having good numbers against any kind of intermediate route. So that's a nice tactical piece of defense early on. Now, Louisiana is going to struggle to get lined up on this play, so it's not going to be the successful result you're looking for. Uh, but what I want you to focus on here is what they're going to do. Again, too high look, they're getting their play call, too high look. Tony is all about trying to change the, the read timing for a quarterback. So obviously a quarterback has players they'll read. They're going to have a post-snap read, a pre-snap read. Uh, if they're running a, a, any kind of run-oriented zone read, um, they'll have a designated player they read. And really most of Tony's defense, and I think most good tactical defensive coordinators, are trying to slow this process down. And even little things can mess the exchange up. Here you're going to see App State go four wide, uh, running back here. And we're starting in our two high shell. And what's going to happen here is really just a very simple exchange. It won't seem like much here, but we're going to have a simple exchange here. Safety corner exchange, right? Safety nickel exchange. Just going to drop. He's going to drop back. He's going to come down. And again, this just changes the read window for a second. This is not going to be a pass, but it changes the read window for a second. It gives you something to think about. Meanwhile, across the rest of the defense, we don't get quite lined up in time. This is going to turn into a small gain here for App State. Uh, but either way, pay attention on what happens with the back end. It's never going to just be vanilla. Tony's very, very big about making sure teams can't just get settled into matchups. Very often, if you're going to see a three receiver set like this trips to one side, teams will automatically play a four on three. And on this side, they'll play a two on one. Of course, if you go five wide, they'll typically play four on three, three on two. Tony likes to mess this up. He likes to mess with you. Oftentimes, he maybe will go here. He might flex a defender in and go five on three. And two on one, he might flip that around. He might change the numbers on you. So you're never quite sure what, where your matchup is and what's going to happen. And most of his defense is geared towards targets. Now, this makes so much sense. But if you have a receiver that's getting most of your targets over here, you're going to make sure you give him extra attention. You're going to play your extra defenders on that side. You are not just going to line up vanilla and say, every time I see this set, I'm going to line up four over three and two over one. And again, I'm not going to have time to break all this stuff down in this video. This is sort of an orientation video, but all season long as I bring you each game, we'll dive more into that. But something to pay attention for 
um, this season is going to be how Tony handles these passing numbers games. He will not just do it in a vanilla way. In fact, get used to me saying that most of what he does is not just going to be done because they're in this formation. We do it. It's going to be opponent specific. It's going to be personnel specific. And he's also going to be trying to mess with the quarterback, just slowing down that read clock enough. It's third down for App State. This is a breath of fresh air, especially for Florida fans. If you're coming into this, uh, often we saw Florida play very safe. You're not going to see that here from App State. Uh, App State will frequently use any number of defensive linemen. Uh, during the season last year, they used as few as one defensive lineman for a couple of snaps. They'll use two, three, four, or even five. Of course, they'll play a lot of linebackers. You could say that three, four, sort of a base defense for them because they play a lot of linebackers, but they actually run very, very little true three, four defense. What matters the most is how often you'll see the numbers on the line of scrimmage change. Nowadays, really, whether you're a nickel uh, or you're in dime or you are in a 3-4 or a 4-3 or you're in a 3-3-5 or a 3-2-6 or whatever else you want, so much of what matters is are you aligned at the line of scrimmage and do you have enough numbers in the box to make sure that you are stopping what your opponent wants to do and that you are obfuscating the read the quarterback wants to make. Pistol formation here from App State. Two receivers. And you're going to see as we handle this, we are choosing on third and short to play max aggression against the run. We're going man to man with a free safety, and we are trying to stop this first down. I like this commitment to it. Hold the edge here. Hold the edge here. Great, great upfield push here. And then we just quite don't make this tackle in time. But you'll take that every single day of the week. They barely squeak out that third down gain uh, for a first down. You played aggressive. You won at the line of scrimmage. You almost got a stop. But I like the posturing again here early on from Louisiana, putting pressure on App State, letting them know that we're not just going to give something to you because you're afraid or we're afraid. You're going to have to earn each and every yard. Third down and five now for App State. App State played the most man snaps in the Sun Belt, which, of course, you know, if you followed my channel at all, it's going to warm my heart. They played about a third of their snaps in man rather evenly distributed between all the downs first second and third down so they're not just down specific again they're gonna play man against certain formations certain looks depending upon the team and against app state they didn't have a whole lot of respect for their passing game and on top of that they really knew app state liked to throw the ball primarily uh, to one main receiver so they felt comfortable being able to play their cover two man which they play more cover two man than cover one I like this. I'm a big fan of cover two man, especially in the modern game, especially the way Tony uses his safeties, moving them around pre-snap. It's very hard to know if you're going to get man or zone against Louisiana. This is a really, really nice job. And we're going to start here from the bottom. Uh, we're going to start from the bottom. So obviously, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, of course, you coach football. This is a layup. Uh, but anyway, if we're outside the numbers here, we're going to make sure that we're playing inside leverage. Force that here. If we're inside the numbers, especially in this look where we're basically two on one on this side, we want to funnel. We want to funnel this receiver to our safety. We want to make sure that we stay on the outside here. Let's watch and see if this happens. Read perfectly. Take a look at the footwork. Staying flat. Staying flat. Make sure he maintains leverage. Inside release. Perfect. Safety over the top. Check. We're good here. Let's go to the top of the screen. Here's our linebacker. He knows he's going to have a tough assignment here guarding right the inside slot. He's going to make sure he takes away this most obvious first down route. Inside leverage, waiting for it, right? Waiting for it, stutters the feet. As soon as he sees this go vertical, he's going to run underneath this, knowing he has safety up over the top on this route. Okay, we're good there. Let's clear the screen. Let's check out the next two. This is the nice combo working, man. So although we're not outside the numbers here, depending on what kind of formation you get, you may change your role. So rather than attempt here to push this to the sideline, uh, instead, you're going to have Louisiana open up, keep a level, different levels here. He's going to be low. He's going to be high, making sure if there's any cross or rub, they can handle it. And then we're going to watch this release. One thing Louisiana does very, very well that Florida did not do well is wait to see what happens on the first three yards of the snap. You can see he's not totally gone. Now, I think if Tony were coaching this, he would have told him to stay a little bit longer here. He bails a little bit too soon on this, but ideally, let the first three yards happen. Stay maybe slight. You're creeping back. You're creeping back. Once you see that happen, you know that's got to go more vertical, and you can take off at this point in time. You're going to see he's squared up. 
taking inside leverage. He's going to make sure he shepherds his route to the outside. He's going to make sure he funnels his to a safety. And we are good across the board. Everyone is using proper leverage. There's nowhere to go with this football. And then on top of that, we bring our free linebacker down. He's going to take care of the running back one-on-one -on -one here. He stays on him and does his job. And now we let our four pass rushers go to work and we get a sack on the quarterback. Really, really nice stuff from the secondary there. Um, the details make the difference. And again, on film, which you consistently see from Louisiana, they use the proper leverage. They move correctly. They use the leveling concept correctly. And man, they understand how to play past coverage from safeties to corners to nickels. It's very, very nice, very cohesive. And it's one reason why they held out of state to just 119 yards passing in this game. Uh, really, really good stuff from the secondary. Third and 12 again here, different drive for App State. They are again going to come out with trips to the left, their main receiver here. And this is a really nice pre-snap setup. Once again, we have two high. If you're playing quarterback, you're not sure. You're going to get man, you're going to get zone. You don't know what you have. And then post-snap, let's take a look at the responsibilities. Once again, just quickly of what everyone's doing. Uh, here, we're right about at the numbers. And we know, again, formation specific, this is what's great about this, right? We know at this point in time that we are not concerned with this route. We think this is maybe their third route on the progression here. And we're going to let this go one-on-one -on -one, and we are going to use the sideline to help us because this corner knows this safety is going to come down and play robber to the more likely route. Watch how this entire thing plays out. Perfect job here. Now let's watch our levels here. He's going to stay above, right? Above here, why? So in case he gets this early in route, he can run with it. He makes contact within five yards. Perfect job, make contact on the route, reroute. We saw that at Florida. We were woeful at putting hands on receivers. Tony puts an emphasis on that. You're gonna see it here. And now our level has soaked up this next route. And here comes our safety, right? Coming downhill and getting into the window that we want, which is the exact window that he is looking at right here. We are now three on two. Here's the first down marker. We have taken away the play that they want. Look at that, gone. On top of that, we've dropped our other linebacker into this window in case, again, because we know, right, he's gonna play outside leverage in case they try to hit this route. We're gonna drop him right into this window. We're gonna take away that throw. Here's your sticks. And now, on top of all of that, the one thing we're not gonna wanna see here is we lose our leverage right here. Lose our leverage, he's flipped us around now. He's given himself a chance to get the ball here but we regain our composure, we stay on the route. So we're gonna get a miss here, but it's a small miss. Again, that's not an open receiver. Small miss though here, we've lost directing towards our help. Now our safety on the weak side here is looking at the quarterback's eyes. He sees he's just been locked in here the whole time. Of course, he's not gonna be able to get to this ball, but he's squeezing this distance, squeezing this distance, right? We've kept him towards the sideline. This is gonna be a perfect pass. Quarterback's gonna put one up here. He's got nowhere else to go. This ball's nowhere near the mark. We get two defenders here and almost an interception. Again, excellent defense, third and long, very sound, excellent concepts. Take away what the other team wants to do first perfectly. Get a three-on-two matchup at the point of attack. Textbook, excellent tactical defense. In a championship game, no less, against an opponent you have played. So this is displaying a nice level of game theory and play calling. First and 10 now for App State, and you're gonna get a play action. App State's gonna move away from the spread. They have had almost no success at this point in time in the game running anything with four wide. So we're gonna bring things back in, and we're gonna go here um, with 12 personnel, two tight ends right here, one running back, and then two tight ends. And then we are gonna play a little bit more of uh, power football, if you will, with the pistol. This is very similar to what Napier runs on the offensive side, by the way. A lot of two receiver sets, a lot of 12 personnel or 11 personnel on down the line. Um, using tight ends as flex players, H-backs, blockers, eligible receivers. You're gonna see it here and here. And for now, they're gonna hit us with a play action. We're gonna keep him in the block. And Louisiana is going to respond, for the most part, really, really well. Again, pistol is effective. It allows you a downhill runner. You can run inside zone. You can run wide zone. You can run power. It also gives the running back, obviously, a downhill start. It just gives you a lot of capability, a lot of flexibility. That's the reason why guys like Kyle Shanahan like it so much. But on this play, we're going to go play action. And then we need to see how Louisiana responds. So first of all, we've done a nice job identifying who is eligible. The formation did not trick us. We recognize that they obviously had two tight ends in the formation. And we are ready for it. He is going to be the key to this play, as is he. We're going to make sure that we do our jobs. His job is to make sure that this player does not come out here 
where he does not have help. He knows he has a dropper here to help. He's going to shepherd him correctly. Look at the leverage. Hand on. Leverage. Now we're going to drop. Wait, we, we step in. We read this is not a run. We immediately come back. Head turned. Get into the window. Good angle. Go to where the ball is going, not to where the player currently is. Anticipate the route, which he does. Turns his head around. I mean, that you can't get any better than that. There's nowhere to go with this ball at the college level. Of course, for NFL, if you're an NFL quarterback, you got a space you like here, right? That's why tight ends in the NFL make a killing. Is This is an easy, easy throw for an NFL quarterback in college. Very few guys are going to make that throw on time. You're taking that every single day. Top of the formation here. We're going to make sure we get contact. Again, this is really key. You're going to see a lot of contact. Contact within five. Reroute this to the outside. Why are you rerouting that to the outside? You want to give yourself your safety time. Safety looks like he might be two on one. Right? Here's our weak side free safety. He's going to make sure he's coming over to help over the top in case we get that combination. He is not out of the play. Right? He makes his push. He goes to the boundary. He's in the flats. He reads there is no flat route. He turns his head around, and then he tries to squeeze down in here. So are there windows to throw the ball in this play? Sure. Are any of them good? No, they are not. And that was the play action, a deceptive play action on first down and 10 in a formation they tend to run out of. And Louisiana covers it very, very well. They wind up getting a scramble out and a throwaway. So again, details matter. Nice work in the secondary. Nice play by the linebackers to get to where the ball was going. Great understanding of how to play team defense on the back end. App State comes out again in the pistol with an H-back. They're going to motion him over. We have two tight ends in the formation again, 12 personnel here. And I like what App State does. It's a bunch formation. App State's going to make, I mean, I mean, sorry, Louisiana does. Louisiana's going to wind up staying outside of this. This to me is really, really nice. I like geometry here when it comes to football. But you want to think of this being a triangle that builds a house. That's how I like to teach it. Triangle that builds a house, right? You want to lock this all within your defense. And the way you do that is you get outside this bunch set here and you make sure you're going to keep everything funneled into where you're playing defense. So I like the pre-snap alignment. That's half the battle in football. They get it correct. And now what do we get? Are we going to get run? Are we going to play action? We're going to get a handoff. Linebackers flowing to the ball nicely. Uh, defensive line setting the edge here nicely. Take a look at the edge set. We're winning right on the edge. That gives us a free linebacker here. How often did you ever see this happen in Florida games? The answer is not often. He's free to make this tackle. He's not going to wind up getting there, but this is a great, great job of holding the edge against this wide zone run, which allows our D tackle to come in and make a two-on-one tackle here for no gain. So really nice formation there on defense to counter what the offense did, which set them up to play correctly. They wound up doing their job, understanding what the most likely play was, and they get a stop. For no gain. Second and 10 again, pre snap. What is Louisiana in? Too high shell? Are they playing man? Are they playing zone? We can't know. Can't know till post snap. Something that you want to make sure you're giving teams a look for. You don't want them to know what you're in. And we are again going to play cover to man. Receiver outside the numbers. We're going to shepherd him to the outside. Do we do it? Yes, we do. Check. All right, we've got to make sure here we're one on one with a tight end and a linebacker. Let's make sure we win this and keep this damage low. Check. Here, same concept. We're playing inside leverage. You want to make sure we're going to force him to the outside. Why? Because we think the most likely attack pattern is actually inside. We're going to make them make throws they do not want to make to this receiver, which is to the outside. So we are going to hold that off and look at the route we get, by the way. We're trying to get an inside curl, right? Great recognition there. Inside curl, that's gone. Two safeties over the top playing safe. Taken out here and here. So now we're going to go here, where we essentially in the slot are going to get a little bit of like a double little move to an in route, then a hitch route here. Nice route, create some separation. We are all over this. The ball is just now being caught, and we make the tackle. That is a very hard-earned six yards. Great coverage across the board in the secondary. Everyone follows the rules. Really nice stuff. Not a lot of places to go there, putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Second down now, App State tries to come out here in a two-by-two, two, changing their looks. App State trying everything in this game to give something that will mess up Louisiana's defense. Louisiana comes out. We're going to play three-on-three. Three-on-three. Three. This is really, really nice setup. Again, build the house, right? Build the house. Take a look. Build the house here. Build the house here. Keep them inside your range. So we're looking good here. Pre-snap as far as pass-wise goes. Now on defense, rule number one is set the edge. Set the edge. If you don't set the edge, you're in trouble. And we have lost our edge, right? 
you're a defensive lineman here, a defensive end. You kind of feel like, ooh, I just shook this guy. I'm feeling good. Uh, the only problem here is despite getting a win up here in the A-gap, you now are not where you should be, which is here, and you've caused some serious problems because they're four wide. They're sending out four receivers. We are occupied here with the pass. We're doing our job, by the way. Great job. Take a look at this. Look at this. This is perfect, right? We're, we're keeping these guys right in our house, right? That's really, really nice. And then here, oh, no one's there, right? No one's there because, again, we're keeping these guys in our house. We're doing our job. We have to make sure we seal this off. We need to do our job here. Job is not done. They're going to take our linebacker out. We're two inside here, and this turns into a big run and a nice first down. So, again, you can have the play call correct. Uh, you still have to do your job. So Louisiana generally does a nice job on playing the edge. But again, the secondary almost always tends to be perfect. And that's what Tony's, I think, expertise is. I'd, I'd expect to see Florida even up what Tony wants to do on the D-line and linebacker core to clean up even some of the little issues they have in this game. But again, it's football. Sometimes you're just going to get it wrong. We're getting to watch this with the benefit of hindsight, replay, and slow motion. Uh, but either way, that's going to get them there in a first down for App State. What I really love about football is how you can take a simple play and look at the little intricacies, especially with uh, with the coach's tactical. So let's start down here. If you've watched for any amount of time, uh, you know for sure that this is unusual. Unusual, right? You don't want to give a receiver the boundary like this. That is not ideal. Uh, There's way too much space. Typically, you want to be here forcing him to your safety. You want to play outside leverage. Instead, he's playing inside leverage giving this receiver an outside release, which is not what you want to do with this much space. Again, in the NFL, you are dead. You would almost never see that. But we're playing tendencies. And that's the point of game theory is, will App State ever run an outbreaking route to this guy? Well, let's look down here and see what happens. No, look at that. He's running an inbreaking route, and we're all over it. That's super, super nice. And that's also a shame on App State for not having an, an ability to audible there and run something different. But regardless, that is nice. That's what you want to see your defensive play caller doing across the board here fundamentals are nice inside leverage here we're going to pin him to the sideline open up and oh 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 you know he got critiqued for this one of course he didn't actually because there was no film review for him at least from tony's standpoint since napier got hired the bull coaches probably did it but right here he starts off well and then he gets ahead of his skis right he gets too big of a gallop step there and he loses this so this is a viable pass to throw the football he had the right idea to start bad execution. As far as the rest of this goes, this is really, really nice. Now, look, the most likely throw from here is a slot fade. People love a slot fade. Single high safety. We run this slot fade. It's, in fact, what App State wants to do on this play, except check out the counter by Louisiana. He's immediately on hike. He's going to slide to the outside, which is what you want to do. That's technique. You want to funnel him to your safety. Make sure you don't give up the slot fade and look at where he is engage the receiver that is so perfect reroute the receiver do not allow him to run this route unhindered hits him contact this play is now stopped timing is off quarterback's ready to throw and this ball is going to wind up going way out of bounds really really nice work so we stopped the initial play they want do some creative stuff down here at the bottom take away tendencies and once again we have correctly called the play they ran good stuff there from tony App State back in 12 personnel. Again, Louisiana, what are we running? Zoner man. Zoner man. We're off here, so you'd expect to get some sort of zone. That's exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get a cover four here. Cover four defense. Our safeties are going to wind up playing aggressive, taking a look at what the routes are. Once they see these routes are stopping, here's our in route. And this is the right route. And this is open, by the way. But look, these are tough throws. These are tough throws. This window on our screen looks nice and big. Just put the ball in there. But the reality is we have one, two, and three underneath defenders with two safeties all enveloping this receiver. This ball has to be thrown on time and rather well. It is not. It is not thrown well in that case. And it goes for an incompletion. This is what you want to be doing as a defense. Make these windows small. Take a look at these linebackers. Good positioning. Getting into the right areas, making this a really hard throw. Safety's coming down quickly, right? They're getting to the ball. The ball's about to hit him. They are there. Good defense on the back end yet again. Third down and 10 here. Louisiana going to line up again. Too high shell. What are we in? We don't know. Could be in man, could be in zone. And we are going to bring a nickel blitz. But in reality, we're going to call this a nickel creeper. And why are we going to call this a creeper? 
because our defensive end is going to stay home. We're only actually sending four. This is called a safe pressure. A safe pressure, it's one of two, of course, that uh, Tony favors. He will use creepers a lot. You'll see it happen more in this, uh, this film study. He will also use simulated pressures, which of course has been really known with Dan Lanning in Georgia. They use it all the time. Uh, not a lot of sim pressures. In fact, I think zero sim pressures were used against App State, opponent specific, but they did use it throughout the season at multiple other occasions. So a creeper is gonna take one non-traditional pass rusher and bring him into pass rush and then drop a traditional pass rusher into coverage. A simulated pressure is gonna basically line everyone up here on the line like this, and you don't know who's coming and who's playing defense, but you'll also only send four guys. These are safe pressures. Safe, again, because you are not changing the back end integrity, but you are changing where the pressure comes from. This is also a really nice play by Louisiana. They are playing tendencies. We're going to bring the creeper into the run window on third down and 10, and we are going to be sitting there waiting for this play from App State. So again, chalk up another win for Tony calling a play. That is a perfectly designed play call. You are not bringing him to. He is safe. He's in the back end in case the quarterback keeps it. Really, really nice stuff in general there from Louisiana. All right, first and 10 from App State. You're not going to see for a lot of the rest of this film study how App State generated yards in this game and how they kept themselves in the game, and it's going to be quarterback runs on broken plays. So once again, we're going to build this house in this bunch set. We're going to build it. We're going to lock it down. It's beautifully done. The plays come out here. That's gone. We're two-on-one against their best receiver. He's out here for a one-yard gain. We're on top of that, and the inside curl is taken away. Nowhere to go. He wants to go here. He could make this throw. You could put this throw right here. If you're a really good quarterback, that throw is available to you. Not comfortable for him, of course, which is what Louisiana knows. And then we have this play. This is a sack. Look, we're good here. We've got this sack. We're in range. Oh, we just miss it. And instead of that being a sack, winds up being a small five-yard game. But again, great job on the back end. Just a miss right there on the front end. Third down and five. App State again comes out with trips, which they like. Trips to the left. Best receiver up here up top. We're going to play two on one down here. And we're going to play four, presumably on three down here. Pre-snap. That's the look the quarterback's going to get. And post-snap, we're going to look in here. Good stuff's happening. But for now, let's just take a look at our, our secondary. Make sure we do a good job. So one up top. Inside leverage, perfect. He lined up outside the numbers. Let's funnel him here. Use the sideline as our defender, except we do get torched. Again, this is this is not the NFL. In the NFL, you've got your number one receiver over here. If you trust him beating him on an outside release, you know the safety can't get there. You're probably putting a ball right here, right? We're not looking there. He gets beat. That's not the point because we're not going there. We cover this nicely. And over here, take a look at what's going on over here. Inside leverage to make sure we're not going to allow the crossing routes that have literally decimated Florida. That doesn't happen. He instead is going to run here to the flat. And then we are going to notice this because we're playing zone. We're going to switch this off. He's going to come down on that route and he's going to soak up the route over top. One more time. Take a look at the action. You can see him pointing. They're going to point. Good communication here. I'm coming. He's going to grab that. And now we've taken that away. Again, that's a long throw that you'll, you'll survive if that's third down where you want to go. You've locked up the most likely route here in the middle and you have allowed the number one receiver to get open here on the top. But that's not where they're going. Either way, nice job generally on the back end, on the front end. Really nice job until the moment of truth. So Louisiana is equally likely to have a three-man front as they are a four-man front, which is also really nice. They mix it up significantly. Of course, you're going to see here a buck or a stand-up defensive end. Uh, could be a linebacker. Could be a D-end. They use multiple people in that position. This is going to be a nice piece here of another safe pressure. We're going to twist here. We're going to switch the gaps the linemen are going through, and we're going to create a double A gap pressure that's going to get home. Linebacker comes through totally untouched, but we are still only going to send four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to send our stand up end here, one on one versus the running back. So a really nice design. Again, we are in a safe pressure. We did not commit a fifth man to this. We're going to get an immediate A gap right here. A gap pressure. We are home. We have stopped this play. There is nowhere good to go. The quarterback is no longer looking downfield. All we have to do is make this play, but we come in too hot. Again, this quarterback is not super agile, but he can run, and we're going to come in too hot. Just break down a little earlier here. Keep him contained. Keep him in your house, right? We're coming too hot. I'm going to allow a drive by, and then right here, we're going to get a little shove in the back, a quality shove in the back here for our help. 
defensive end there. And then we're just tantalizingly not going to get there. So it should be a stop. Instead, it winds up being a conversion. Uh, but again, excellent work in the back end. Great play design. Really nice, safe pressure there using a creeper. In that case, with your middle linebacker through the A-gap, generating a home run pressure at a crucial down. Unfortunately, you missed the tackle. App State's back to 12 personnel, and they are really trying to get their best receiver the football. They're going to catch Louisiana in a favorable play call here to get them on. Louisiana is going to go cover three. You're going to play cover three, and you're going to see that corner up top is going to bail immediately, open the hips and bail high into the outside, trying to keep any of these routes in between him. Safety is also going to bail, and we are going to build this house with these players here, if you will. Zone, 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 right? Playing underneath. We're there. Uh, this is going to be just a nice on-time first read ball. There's your play action to hold the linebackers, give a window to throw right in here. And this ball gets completed here for a first down for App State. Uh, again, you can't always cover everything, but a nice play call by App State there. Still a tight window. I want you to look at what happens on this play. Despite the fact that we're playing cover three, despite the fact that we're early bailing, we're opening up the hips. Look at the collapse on the route. Right, That ball's there, and here's his hand making a play on it. Boom, right there. So although that is a completion, those are the kind of completions you'll live with. And sometimes the beauty of being an offensive coordinator is you find something you like. And so you're going to run the same exact play, slightly different action here in the backfield, but pretty much the same play. Cover two shell. We're going to rotate down into the box here. Help against the run. We feel like we're going to get run. We don't get run. Now it's his job to get back into this window. We talked earlier about how well the linebacker did going to where the player was going. This is an example of what not to do. He should be going to where this route's going. He's going to buzz right here. He loses contact. He's guarding out to the flat. It's not where that route's going. In fact, it's going over top. But as he's buzzing over there, there's enough of a presence here that this throw gets yanked and there it is off target should be an easy completion same exact play just slight difference in who went where back here that's the only difference is where they went back there creates the window misses it so you know it's a nice play there by app state they should have had that again they don't have it uh, but either way louisiana would have been there he's the dropper he's got to be there but you got to go to where the play is going and he winds up getting that window just a little wrong but nice work again one more time, just because I'm a quarterback and I look at that and think, how do you miss that throw? Again, football's a great game because it just takes one person doing the wrong thing and a play that should be a good play becomes a great play. We're going to motion in. Same personnel, 12 personnel. We're liking this formation. We're having a good drive here for App State. We're going to build our house. Last time I said it, I promise. Just get the visualization going. Going to make sure that everyone is inside of us, which we are. We're in good shape here pre-snap. And then we get... The handoff, lead blocker with the H-back coming out here. We're going to run some wide zone. Think of uh, Terrell Davis with the Broncos back in the day. He can take his pick anywhere he wants to go with this, find a crease and hit it, get vertical. He finds one, and then we're going to get a really, really nice block right here. Take a look at this block from the H-back. Boom. Bam. That's, that's a heck of a block right there. That guy's getting a game ball for that one. But the real issue with this is that's a great block. That's nice. But the issue happens right here, right? This play is a good play. They've got us. They sealed it up nicely. They've got windows they want. They're getting vertical. But you can't let this happen. He has to hold the edge again, right? We built the house like we talked about. You got to hold the edge here. You can't go to the middle. Now you're taking his role and you're not helping he basically blocks himself out of the play. Now you understand why he does it. Right now the running back is here and he's thinking, well, if he goes here, I got to make a play, but that's not his play to make. We have an unblocked safety there. And by that little step in right there, that step in right there is going to end us. And he's going to come out this window here. And now we have the dreaded one guy blocking two players unintentionally. He's not even worried about him. And we're dead. Touchdown from App State. Either way, nice play. They caught us there, right? It's hard to stop a wide zone player and inside zone play. Either of those plays are hard to stop. That's why they're very popular. But that play should have been maybe 8, 9, 10 yards and not a touchdown. And obviously, given the way Louisiana's back end was playing, you just want to tackle them short at the end zone there. But winds up being a touchdown. You got to do your job. You have to make sure you understand where your help is. Something Louisiana does very, very well. You've seen a lot of plays already. The majority of the time, they're funneling players to each other. Didn't happen there. Results in a touchdown. 
First and 10 now, minute 37 left in the half. You're going to see some nice rotation here. Four wide. Here is the top receiver again for App State. They're going to send five out. Cover that up here. We're going to again drop right into this little slant window. This is perfectly done. Quarterback's eyes are over here. And what we've done up top is we brought our safety. Again, looks like it could be too high. Could be bailing. Could play cover four in this situation. Could play a cover six where we're combo covering. We're down here in cover two on this side. A lot of things we could do. But post snap, what happens is we're going to reroute here. Buzz to the flat. We're going to bring our safety down here. Take this right away. We're going to keep him over top here. Quarterback is looking in this window. Nothing that he likes. He then comes back around to this window. Nothing that he likes. We've taken the perfect route here using the sideline as a defender. And we have won. This play is over. Great job to the back end. Only problem is... Oh, no, no. Not again. He's going to wind up running on us. Again, there's a minute and 30 seconds left. Not the end of the world, but... You get a little excited here, right? You come flying through the A-gap. Really, really nice job. I mean, a really nice job here by the guard. That's a hero-saving play, right? Reroutes that and winds up turning it into a first down for our state. I'm going to send yet another creeper here and play cover three behind it. But again, we're starting in the two-eye shell. Very hard to read what we're playing in. We're going to bail, bail. There goes your safety there. And then we're going to come down here. Here's your drag route. And here comes your creeper. He's going to creep in, and in exchange, he's going to come out here to the flat, right? So there's your creeper. Safe pressure, just four men coming through. We're not going to get home here, but take a look here. Our dropper is going to be right there to make the tackle. Keeping the play in bounds. Here we're running the clock down at the end of the first half. So after a first down penalty, uh, it's now second down, or sorry, second down penalty. It's now second down in about 14 and 15 here. And this is what's nice. Again, Louisiana, this is nice. There's a minute left. You could play safe. You could play afraid, uh, but they are not. They're going to play four on three here, safety here. Again, same thing we've seen, best receiver here, two on one. And now we're going to put our put our linebacker here. He's free. Going to sit him on the line. This is a sort of a one-man simulated pressure, if you will. Uh, really just messing with alignment. And then we are going to scrape across and make this tackle. Nice job. That's aggressive posturing by Louisiana there. Uh, again, one thing I like about him a lot, take a look at the early contact here. We are not playing afraid in this situation. We're playing aggressive. We get a nice stop there. Under a minute to go, third down. Really, again, a nice play call. This seems simple here, but you're going to get the get the pistol formation again from App State. And what we get here, safety, starting in our 2 eyes, is going to come through the most likely throw zone here where you can play both the run and the pass. He's reading it. If this is a play action, he's in perfect position here to stop the most likely route on the number one receiver. If it is a handoff, he's going to come flying down here. Our linebacker is reading the H-back. Follow the H-back, follow the ball. He's going to come in here first and engage this. And this play is functionally dead. And it's going to take us to halftime. So nice work there by Louisiana, closing out a really solid defensive first half. It's 17 7. We're now in the third quarter, the first possession for App State. And again, I just I love seeing this. If you want to bunch up the formation here, if you want to run a pistol, you want to run a two receiver set, you want to have six linemen, uh, including your tight ends there, then we're going to make sure that we are loading the line of scrimmage. Just put five guys on the line. Here's our three linebackers behind it, right? We are not going to give you any easy rushing yards. Get to the edge out here, right? Get to the edge, follow the H back, follow the ball, get to the edge of the H back. Stay home. This is really, really nice, right? One thing we have seen Florida do time and time again is not this. Take a look at how they are staying home in their run lanes. How often would you have seen a Florida defender do this or this and just sell out for it? Instead, Louisiana willing to stay home and they're going to wait for this play to come to them, contain it, make the tackle small gain. Now, it's important to remember that Louisiana uh, was one of the best pressure teams. They led the conference again in sacks. They were second in pressures. Uh, excellent pressure-oriented team, yet they also understand that not every play is a pass. You need to make sure you're staying home on run. Nice job there to open the half. Third down now for App State here, and this is going to be a play on film where we see a couple of things Louisiana does not do great here in the secondary. Uh, one, we'll start at the bottom. We're going to start here. So if you listen to Tony talk at all, this would be way too much backpedal cushion. right? We got two safeties here. Uh, almost certainly, he's not going to be so worried about this vertical route that he gets this far when the sticks are here. But most importantly, 
First things first, is the route going to break within the first three yards? No. Okay, it's probably going deeper. But with the sticks being here and being on third down, you do not want this kind of separation. He needs to be right about here. He's going to pay for that. There's the hitch route. He's not going to come down on that. Right? In reality, this ball should go here and not to where it does go. But that's a mistake. Too much cushion there. You can't have that. Secondarily here, right? we're going to open. We're opening. So he's, he's doing a nice. This is a nice little shuffle step. Keep the step small. You're waiting to see what happens in the first three yards. Okay, he hasn't gone past three yet. He's going to open up now. But again, it's a situational football here. It's not first down and 10 where he might be taking you vertical. It's third down and five or six. And you have a safety that's playing to your side here. Don't open all the way up. He opens all the way up. He does not make contact with the receiver. He's going to just try to hang on there. And he's obviously in a window to almost make this play. But he would have been in a window to make this play perfectly if he does not open up right here. You can't open up that early. Know the situation. You know this is the route they most likely want to go to. Louise and I have done a great job all game long denying that one. He's going to get it there. And then lastly, and we saw this a lot, it's just not a throw up state wants to make. We are going to, despite having safety help here, we're going to wind up playing, even though we're inside the numbers, this is unorthodox, we're going to wind up playing an outside release here, or aggressively an outside release here. And this is the reason why, is this is not something they want to throw. I mean, he is, again, he is open. He knows he's open. He wants the football. He's signaling. He's pumping, right? He's open. He's dreaming of this. This is what you want as a receiver. Give me the football. He's not even looking. So it's nice. It's a nice tendency play. Right? If that's happening every play and they're hitting you on that, that's horrible defense. But in this case, they are denying the very thing that App State wants to do, which is try to run in-breaking routes. And on this side of the football, they forgot that for a play, and they wound up giving it up. But on this side, they went aggressive. They forced a throw they didn't want to make, and therefore <clears throat> they wind up not hitting a receiver for a big play. Any team that's a good run-stopping team is going to have a lot of eyes in the backfield, especially when they are playing... Uh, two safeties, or in this case, any kind of free defender. And here you're going to see right away who your man defenders are, who's occupied, and who your free defenders are. This ball is handed off, and immediately, take a look at the posture. We're looking, we're looking, we're going to make sure we're in our run lanes, and now we're going to come down and help make this play. This is really nice stuff. D tackles the first to the ball. He's going to miss a tackle. We're holding the edge here. He's going to come to the ball. Going to miss a tackle. He is now, right? Where was he? He was our safety. He's coming downhill. He's reading run. He's downhill. He's right there. He's going to almost make a tackle, but he misses the tackle. And then lastly, we have our other free run defender, right? What's he doing? Look at where he's going. Holding the edge all the way out to here. He gets rewarded, and he ultimately makes a weak tackle, but a tackle nonetheless at the line of scrimmage. So that's tackling by position, if you will. They're tackling by scheme, by formation, by design. Nice work. App State again with the ten, uh, the uh, twelve personnel rather, twelve personnel, one running back, two tight ends, and again a play fake that wants to go to the inside. I mean, this is just beautiful stuff by Louisiana. I mean, look at this. He wants this route. They want this route all day long. They've scouted it. They've seen it on film. We're going to bring this safety down. No, you are not going to get that route. I'm taking this route away from you. We are two on oneing it. That's where his eyes are. He's only really sending out two receivers here. Is a decoy route here. And he doesn't see it, so he's going to run and he's going to escape. Again, this should be a win. This should be a win for Louisiana. right? Louisiana has a free linebacker. He's playing the running back here. We're playing safe. We're not blitzing. We should be fine. We should be getting home. Here we are. We're right here. Man, he feels like he's home. And he's going to just run himself to vertically. App State, it should be mentioned, has a nice job with their O-lineman never quitting on these plays. Getting some of these late hits. And then here we have a defensive tackle. Doesn't quite make it. And then that's going to wind up being just a short gain. But either way, a lot of opportunities for sacks. Um, Louisiana got three in this game, a pressure rate above 50%. They probably could have had 10 if they had stayed in their lanes, but that should have been a loss. Turns into a small gain. Trips again, I'll start as we finish out this film review. I'll start doing less and less of what's happening in the back end because generally it's really good into showing you what happens at the point of impact and what happens with the number one receiver because I'm sure this guy's still frustrated. Uh, he's a he's a good receiver here. He's going to put a nice move on him. Of course, Louisiana is going to try to keep inside leverage to funnel to your safety, who's going to wind up actually playing robber down here. So we're going to go to a cover one, start in the two-eye shell, cover one, come down and rob this area of the field where he's likely to run a route, he's likely to run a route. 
Uh, instead, we're going to get a really nice win. Again, this is a huge win, right? He's down here robbing. The safety's in the other hash. Boom. That's a touchdown. He's gone. We're not going to look there, though, because it's not really the throw he wants to make. And Louisiana knows that instead. We're going to look to the inside here, and this is one he'd like to have back. We've talked about it all game long. He's not going to go to the outside. Stay on the inside here with your leverage, right? Stay inside of this. He gets on the wrong shoulder, and this is still really nice. I mean, he's all over him, right? Good contact early on. Hand is there. He makes a bobbled catch, and he converts on third down. That's a nice conversion, but all of that's taken away if he just remembers in this case here, that if you're going to play square up, which you can, right, square up here, you know that most likely App State wants to run this in-breaking route. And there you go. Now, there's nothing wrong with him, of course, playing outside leverage. He is inside the numbers on this play. And again, I don't know what Louisiana's call is here. Um, but textbook-wise, of course, you play outside leverage and you take this throw. But I think against App State, we'd seen Louisiana overplaying the inside, coming down with a robber. Uh, in this case, they were expecting the ball to go here, which is not where it went. And this is just a nice play up there. And again, you'll live with that, right? Those are the kind of completions you want to see made against your defense. Something like that. They get it, they convert it. I can't say enough good things in general about Louisiana's secondary. The fact that we can watch this film and rarely see open receivers is a testament to that, especially at this level. Here's the number one receiver. Look, we know he's been open. He was open on the previous couple of plays. And so now they're just like, we're going to go to him. But App State, I mean, Louisiana also knows this. So Louisiana comes out. This looks very similar to what they've been seeing. Hey, we've seen this before. We're going to give him more space. Notice how he's not out here by the numbers now. This is generally a dead giveaway, by the way. They want to hit this guy. They've now moved him really to what I'm going to call the true middle here. He can run any route he wants, full route tree. And this is almost a signal. Hey, we're going to go to this guy. And uh, we're going to back up. Look at that. Look at this timing. He's peeking in. He's peeking in. He waits. He backs up. The quarterback has not even seen that he's gone back yet, right? I mean, he just, this is perfect timing. There's your play action. He opens up, snaps right to him. Whoops, I'm right on top. The safety is also right here. Let's watch the safety's eyes. Really great stuff. Watch in. Okay, bam. Does not have the ball. Snap to the receiver. I'm help on the number one. Snap to him. Get vertical to the inside, vertical to the outside. We are bracketing this guy. I mean, you just can't say enough about that. That is so, so good. And we're going here the whole way, so we're just going to throw it. Winds up being an incompletion. But in general, that's such good defense on that side. Up top, where should you should have gone with your, if you've got the football here, is you should have immediately seen this. Again, pre-snap, right? Pre-snap, he misses this check. Post snap, snap your head around if you're a quarterback. This is not an offensive video, but if you're a quarterback, you see this. He's on top of your guy. You got to get to your number two. And the number two here is open. Safety's coming down on this, but he's open, right? He misses this. He's going home run ball. Again, it's college football. Stuff like this happens all the time. But nice work by Louisiana yet again, anticipating where they want to go with the football. That is so much of good play calling, right? Give your players an advantage. And in this game so far, Tony's done that. Third down and six here in App State's going to go to the well. We've seen this play before. 12 personnel, they're just going to run their tight end here on a flat route, and they're going to bring this favorite slant route here, and they're actually going to get the slant route one-on-one. -on -one. We are playing him straight up. Again, I think that's kind of interesting. Typically in the past, when he's been here on the numbers, we have played inside leverage. I'm surprised here they didn't. I'm going to chalk that up to a mistake in theory in this situation. Either way, this is going to be a tight window. And that's one thing you see about Louisiana. We could say, is there a window here? Yeah, there's a window. He's got a body. You've got to put this ball on his body. It's a bad throw. But this is nice. I mean, again, he's on the wrong shoulder here for this particular route. But, I mean, that's going to be tough. He's right there. He's all over him. It's nice contact again. All over him. All over him. His route hasn't even begun yet. Right? This is good stuff. There are not a lot of places to go with the football. All right, fourth down and six. What do you call if you're Tony? What kind of coordinator are you? What do you like to play? Are you safe? Are you aggressive? All right, first of all, we got a little change here. This certainly doesn't look like a too high shell because it's not, right? Right away, you're banking on one safety. There's your rotation. We have one safety. And what does Tony run? Well, right here, we got five guys in the line of scrimmage, despite the fact that they're trips, right? That's unusual. So we're going to call this sort of a sim pressure, kind of a sim pressure that becomes a blitz. Not really. I wouldn't technically call it that, right? In reality, you're just going to get a middle linebacker blitz right here. This is kind of a nice design. He's going to open up like he's playing zone. 
Then he's going to shoot through the A-gap. Our defensive end here is going to come back. He's going to drop into this little slant window, which obviously has killed Florida a ton. And we're going to wind up covering, again, really, this is going nowhere. I mean, take a look again. This is so good. Where does he want to go? He wants to go right here. Can he go there? There's no chance he can go there. I mean, really excellent stuff by Louisiana. They are all over this. Watch how well they cover this with levels here. They're trying to run. Take a look. They're trying to run. A little bit of a rub here, a rub underneath, rub up top. Perfect leveling job. Keep your leverage, stay on top of the route, drops right into this. This works really well. If you're the quarterback, you don't know if anyone is going to drop or not. So you have a lot of eye traffic. You take your snap, you see an A-gap an A blitz coming. You now see the switch is clean. You now have a dropper here in your window, and you're basically not going to throw it. So again, slow the quarterback's read window down. Mission accomplished. Now all we need to do is make a tackle. We're going to come up the field again too fast on our A-gap blitz. We're too excited on these blitzes. Slow down a little bit. This guy is gone. It's fourth and six. And either way, thankfully, you've got your dropper who's here to make the tackle for you, except remember he's a defensive end, not necessarily a true linebacker, gets juked by this quarterback who then turns nothing into something. So you're seeing a developing story here. A lot of these plays by App State quarterback runs off broken plays, really sound scheme, really sound play call. That was a win for the play caller, but ultimately a win for the quarterback getting away. Next play, it's going to be another creeper here. Creeper coming in. Here's our dropper and another win for the quarterback who is going to wind up because of this. Again, I talked at the opening. The defensive line, I think, is something that Tony's going to want to clean up. Point of emphasis this year at Florida. Uh, their D-line was obviously good. It generated a lot of pressures, but it wasn't nearly as clean as the secondary was. And that often happens. Any defensive coordinator has a specialty. It has something they teach really, really well. And I think on film, it's very clear that Tony teaches the heck out of the secondary. It is so so well coached. The defensive line, solid, solid. We're, we're nitpicking mistakes here, but when you're seeing this happen, and again, this is going to wind up being a creeper. He's looking like he's going to play nickel. He's not. He's a big guy. You just can't have this, right? You can't have this gap control. If he goes into his gap, this play doesn't happen. Instead, it does happen, and you're making something out of nothing. All right, third down and basically six inches. Crucial part of the game, it's 17-7 to right now in favor of Louisiana. And again, what do we see here from Louisiana? Aggressive posturing, right? Aggressive posturing here. We have seven, eight in the box. He's, we're not going to count him. He's probably going to be playing heads up. So we have eight in the box. We're playing even numbers here, and we're going to get a win. I just talked about the defensive line struggling at a point, but we're going to get an A-gap win right here. Immediate win on the guard one-on-one, -on -one, and that is going to end this play right there dead stop surprisingly perhaps app state elects to kick a field goal and again they were struggling to score to go down 17 to 10 i'm going to show you one last pass play here in the third quarter i'm going to go all the way to the end of the game because you've generally seen enough for this game um, most of the rest of the plays obviously quarterback got away on some quarterback runs and I'll show you the scoring play that occurs after this but I want to show you one more of these regular quote unquote plays because App State tried hard to complete some deep passes especially out of this 12 personnel but what you saw from Louisiana is they were both able to maintain numbers integrity at the line of scrimmage but also their three on two advantage on defense which against some teams three on two would not work but they knew against App State it would work there's your play action, and I want to watch how this is done. So down low on this side, we're going to play press. We're going to force to the inside where we have our only single high safety, and we're going to give a free release here up top, free release here up top, but we're going to make sure we funnel in between here. So right now, we are absolutely perfect. We have outside leverage funneling to our safety. He's playing both receivers. He's playing both releases, watching the eyes of the quarterback, and then up top here, right off the screen, we have our corner who's going to hold the boundary, and we're going to play in between. This is absolutely perfect. Again, we're building this house. That's right, building the house, keeping them in between in our house. And look at this. I mean, that's just so, so good underneath, over top, bracketed. Nothing there, nowhere to go, dead. Excellent fundamental secondary play. And these are all off-play action passes, which makes it that much more impressive. It's 24-10. 
late moments of the game here. Still time, though, for App State to mount a comeback, and it is fourth down. Another big play. We saw them convert earlier. Here we are again, and let's see what Louisiana chooses to do on this one. So they're going to bring a soft four-man rush here, this time trying not to allow the quarterback to escape. So you see the adjustment. They're waiting for him here. you got to love to see that. If you're getting beat all game long, which they got beat more times than I showed you, obviously, um, you're going to wait, and this is smart. Don't just run like a bull in a china shop. Secondarily, we're playing cover two man. We're playing cover two man, and we're sinking down low because we think the ball is coming to this side. And one guy here forgets that he's playing cover two man, and he's playing zone. He passes off to no one and then recognizes, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing man, and catches back up here. But that's not where the ball's going, so we're okay. The ball is coming down here where we have inside leverage. Inside leverage, we're going to embrace. Again, once you see the route happening, that's a route. Get contact. He gets contact. This is dead, right? Look at the quarterback here. You're thinking, yeah, that's my throw. That's This is where I'm going. That's the ball I like. You got a guy here on a dig. You got some separation here. You're like, that's the guy. That's the one I want. <laughs> this is the throw he makes. And I mean, that's just, that's great stuff. There's a lot of fortuitous things going on here, but obviously you guessed correctly what was going to happen as a play caller. You had a nice cover two man call on there. You get to the quarterback, right? Right as he's throwing it, you have a guy in his face. Everything looks good for you. You have a hero catch here. And then you have a missed tackle by your safety who's waiting and then another missed tackle by your second safety who's waiting, and then a touchdown. All of a sudden, we have ourselves a football game. It's 24-16. App State would go for two and not get it. Good play call there, though. And again, that's a conversion you want to see. It's not an open receiver. Uh, but either way, they convert, they score, and we have ourselves a football game. All right, so there's 29 seconds left. It's first down for App State. They need to score a touchdown to get a two-point conversion. How does Tony want to play defense? What kind of guy is he? Let's take a look in the post snap and see. Three-man rush. Seems like we're going to drop eight and play conservative. No, we're not. We're going to blitz right here. We're going to blitz the A-gap. Now, it's not really a blitz, right? We're going to send four-man. This is, again, a safe pressure, but we're looking like we're showing three. Just a little bit of a tactic. Show three. Bring a fourth. Give you something different. Give you something unexpected. And then behind this, we're going to wind up playing a cover four. We're going to play a cover forward, keep everything in between us. We're going to make sure we play safe. And then underneath here, we're going to play aggressively on these routes here. We're setting up our zone very nicely. Everyone is covered up really well. All we really have here is the check down, which is exactly what you want them to get. You're begging them to throw this football, make a tackle here, take off 10 seconds. So very, very nice zone work here. And on top of that, thanks to us bringing that pressure take a look at this really nice design we're going to bring in this pressure here it's a four-man rush everyone is sucked in and then he's going to slide out the side door and get to the quarterback and almost cause a fumble this is going to get ruled an incomplete pass but this again this is play calling and this is execution right we could have just stayed like most teams would have stayed we're just going to drop eight play safe drop eight right drop eight instead we bring him in and then he has the flexibility here to make this move to the outside of the defensive end. And he gets hit on this quarterback, making this play dead. All right, last play of the game now. Well, it's going to wind up being the last play of the game, but it would not necessarily have been the last play of the game. Again, App State must score and get a two-point conversion. What does Tony elect to do on defense? He's going to elect to send four. I'd like to send four. Keep a spy here in case the quarterback goes out. And we're going to play cover two man. Cover two man, a couple of interesting things here. As you would expect that he's going to play outside leverage and funnel this to his safety. In this case, in this case, he's going to actually get beat to the outside, which is definitely not ideal at all. That is not ideal. That is not what you want. This ball can be thrown here and he can get out of bounds. So not good. Immediately we lost leverage. Secondarily, and we talked about this earlier, we defended this slot fade really well earlier in the game by staying on top of it and to the outside. That is not going to happen here. Instead, we're going to open up, and I can't imagine this on the zone. This must have been something they wanted. Why? Because we are lined up on the numbers. So we're thinking, hey, you know what? Let's take inside leverage. Let's funnel him to the sideline because he's not really where a slot fade typically would be, which is somewhere in there. So we're going to funnel him to the sideline. And, you know, I like this throw. That's a throw I think a lot of guys like, especially at outbound. So right now we sort of have two throws we could make that are not horrible, right? Now, at this point in time, it should be noted, this safety is only playing here towards this hash because the quarterback's eyes are all the way over here, 
right? In theory, again, if you're a good safety here and, and Louisiana safeties move well, if his eyes snap around to here, he could get to this. But he wasn't going to get to this, take a look, because this was a premeditated play by App State. The entire play was to look here, which he actually has this throw, right? This is probably the throw he should just make. And then throw this slot fade. That's what they want. That's the play they want. It's the play they have on. And it's the play they're going to get. He's lining up. This safety's going to guard nobody. Again, no one's here. This is a mistake by him. No one's here. And now we have a free runner. He is open. He is open. He's not going to catch him. If this is, a, if this is a great thrown ball, we're in business. Uh, except one little thing I'm not telling you about, which is we're going to get a win down here. Aaron Donald, of course, said this in the Super Bowl to get a W, and we're going to get one here right off the edge. One-on-one -on -one pass rush win, and then whammo. We're stripping the ball this time. Strip sack for the championship. Not bad, huh? One more time. A lot of the back end look to get the front end look. Strip sack for the championship. So in this moment, in this moment, Tony as a play caller goes cover two man. Sends four, gets pressure. Previous play, gets pressure. Doesn't just drop three, but does have a few little weaknesses here. This was not a Hail Mary play. There was time left. Obviously, we had a breakdown here. Safety is guarding nobody. And on top of this, we had to move down here. So we had some vulnerabilities. It wasn't perfect. We get the strip sack. We get the win. We get the championship, right? And that aggression, I think, aggression is an interesting word with Tony. He's not aggressive in a reckless way. Again, most of these pressures I showed you, he's only actually bringing four guys. So he's playing very numbers sound on both sides of the football. And that's really where I'm going to conclude this thought. Obviously, throughout this 2022 season, we're going to learn a lot about how Tony wants to call plays at the highest level in the SEC. But what you should take away from this right now is that he's a very tactical coordinator. He will utilize every possible advantage. He will utilize every formation, every tactic, every personnel grouping, every way you possibly can to gain an advantage on his opponent. I would expect to see game plans differ from game to game, which will not only be fun for me to break down, but should be fun for you to watch as the season goes on. He's been very successful where he's been. He has never coached anywhere even remotely on this level. Uh, but based upon what I see on film, tactically, in my opinion, uh, Tony is at the highest level tactically. It also seems like he is an excellent teacher of the game. So if Florida gets the right players, I would expect the tactics to be on point. I would not expect us to have to go on and ask so many questions about why we're defending a formation this way or why we're doing something this way. We should have a lot less of this in the upcoming year. Uh, so all in all, I'm excited to get some new content to break down. I'm excited to get a cerebral coordinator who I think is going to bring more modern approach to defense, trying to force offenses into bad situations by playing their tendencies and by muddying up the read windows. So I look forward to this happening all season long. Obviously, we're quite a ways away from the season, depending on when you watch this or the season is right around the corner. It just depends on when you're looking at it. But as always, thanks for watching. It's good to be back with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback, content, things you want to see in the future, of course, just let me know and I will do my best to cover it. That's all for now. I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, and I'll see you next time.